Hi students, welcome to the course on cyber security. Myself, Dr. A. Murali M. Rao, Head of IT Department, Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. This session, I would like to talk on web application security. Since the course is on cyber security, the web application security is part of it. When we talk about the 360 degrees view of cyber security, there are many verticals to be considered to have the complete cyber security. As you all know that providing security or providing cyber security includes various domains such as the network domain, the systems domain, application domain and uh, the data domain. So each one is exclusively important when we talk about the cyber security in 360 degrees uh, view. To begin with, let's see that what is a web application. A web application is a software application that runs on a remote server. Mostly Web browsers are used to access web applications over a network. The network could be either through intra internet or maybe intranet too. Suppose intranet means that if an organization having multiple branches across India or even across globe, for that where no need of access other than these branches so that so all these branches can be connected through net where we call it as a intranet and internet you all know some examples for web applications are facebook say we all know that facebook is uh, a well known uh, web application exclusively it comes under uh, social uh, networking even so many government e services such as say for example passport service income tax service and many and even the e commerce applications airlines or train reservations applications and also many more so nowadays uh, there are there is a scope of web application in each and every usable or working areas See, the next question is that why web applications are prone to hack or prone to attack? See, when you go before web application development, that time maximum the command line interface are there, that time the attacks are the very, very less or very, very limited. But uh, the web applications make, uh, you know, lot of vulnerabilities. Why? Because there are web applications to run a web application it requires so many tools and technologies where the technologies are in many cases or the technologies or tools are almost heterogeneity in nature that's why each and every tool which is being used at parts paid for successful execution of web application have a separate access a methodology, some security requirement. That's why always web applications are prone to hack by hackers or attackers. Suppose if you see that some reasons for the why the web applications are prone to hack, some reasons are the first thing is that insecure programming code. It means that nowadays the developer, the software developers still are mere knowledge in by writing uh, you know, secure coding. That's why the first and foremost reasons is that insecure programming code. See nowadays uh, secure programming is essentially needed as important as or more important than even the business logic of uh, the application. The next is that the non-compliance of coding standards. See nowadays uh, the most of the developers even uh, not aware of uh, the coding standards. So that's why, so this is also because of non-compliance of uh, coding standard, again, the web applications are prone to hack. Uh, similarly, so the weak uh, 
passwords, weak authentications, and also see if you talk about uh, uh, the local network or a, a PC or other, so virus is also one of the areas or reasons where web applications are prone to hack or attack and cracked software. It means that the developers are using the software which has already having some vulnerabilities or we call it as a cracked software and access file and directory permission. The other reason is that because uh, non uh, un unaware of uh, all these things, even uh, uh, the developers or the system administrators are giving excessive file and uh, directory permissions. For that, again creating a, some loophole where hackers or attackers are uh, again uh, so hacking uh, the applications. Still again, if you see that they using uh, insecure protocols, unlicensed uh, software and also the outdated software. The other important uh, is that because it is a, the IT sector is fast growing and uh, the software is also coming up with latest version. The latest version, if any software or if any company released uh, the next version of software means that uh, always uh, the company will take care about uh, the loopholes or uh, the vulnerabilities of uh, the previous version and then uh, the new version will be released. So that's why always uh, the developer should use the latest standard software instead of outdated software. But it seems that if you see the statistics, most of the developers, software developers who are developing application software or web-based application software using outdated software and similarly social engineering also nowadays one of the okay major areas where the hackers or attackers are gaining some confidential uh, uh, credentials of an application in terms of maybe username or maybe password and some other sensitive data through social engineering and also weak server security also again if you talk about the at the server level also uh, the security concerns are there and uh, not using multi-level authentication. See nowadays uh, because of uh, the hackers or attackers are uh, intelligent enough uh, so uh, first level or one level authentication is not at all sufficient where we have to go for a multi-level uh, authentication too. And another is that data leaks and uh, like that there are so many reasons uh, why the web applications are getting hacked or maybe web applications are prone to hack. See data leaks mean that data will be traveled or travels uh, so without any so proper encryption or maybe using some pen drives or memory sticks and physically taking data and moving here and there. So students these are all some of the reasons uh, why web applications are prone to hack. See that for that, for that what to be done, so how to protect. So for that I hope you all know that there is a, there is a, uh, uh, we call it as an OWASP. Generally the all, all web applications are audited or properly validated through certain uh, security standards. That's why we uh, generally use the OWASP, which is uh, Open Web Application Security Project. This is a, uh, a worldwide uh, non-for-profit uh, charitable organization focused on improving the security of uh, web-based application uh, software. So the mission is uh, to make uh, the software security visible so that individuals and organizations are able to design and develop secure software application. The website of OWASP is that www.owasp.org. It is a, so even one can visit the frequently the website so that one can find that the latest vulnerabilities especially in a web application uh, platform. See for example, see even there are various uh, that, that site uh, uh, shows that are uh, explains with uh, uh, different uh, ways that if uh, uh, even on different platform for example say the 
Windows platform, if it is a Windows platform, the application development tools are if a .NET, .NET framework or ASP. So this again, this OSP guidelines will tell us that what are various so vulnerabilities uh, and also how do we protect if an application being developed using .NET or ASP. Similarly, similarly, even if you use any uh, uh, through uh, free and open source uh, software like a PHP or a Java, if uh, if this is a should again the OSP again tells uh, that what are uh, various vulnerabilities, how to use uh, okay the remedial measures to restrict or to control or to protect web applications from vulnerabilities. Similarly, even though the platform like Windows, like Windows Server or maybe a Linux or so, so the open web application security project, mainly the, the website is that www.owasp.org. So I, I strongly suggest students, those who are interested, especially in a, uh, the security concerns, one I strongly recommend that the students can frequently visit the website and see that the latest vulnerabilities and uh, and also the remedial measures. Let us see that what are uh, uh, the top 10 vulnerabilities. See the critical web application security risk in the top 10, of course it is a, the previous year the listed out. Uh, See this numbering is depending on uh, the seriousness. So the first one, the top one uh, web application security is happened with uh, injection flaws. The second one is the broken authentication and uh, session management. Third is uh, the sensitive data exposure. Fourth one is uh, broken access control. Fifth one is uh, the security misconfiguration. Next one is uh, the cross-site uh, scripting in short form the XSS and uh, so insecure deserialization and next one is that using components with uh, known uh, vulnerabilities. The ninth one is uh, insufficient logging and monitoring and the tenth uh, vulnerability uh, in terms of security risk is uh, XML uh, external entities in short form it is known as uh, uh, represented as XXE. These are all uh, students, uh, these are all uh, the top 10 uh, vulnerabilities. I am not uh, saying that but uh, it is uh, uh, it is acceptable too but of course maybe uh, some uh, priority may be changed but of course these are all uh, a top 10 uh, vulnerabilities uh, or security risks where uh, involved in uh, web application, maybe many more but uh, they, they are all uh, top 10. Let us see that very precisely I would like to stress on the each uh, security risk. See the first one is that injection flaws. Injection attacks occur when the user is able to input untrusted data tricking the application or a system to execute unintended uh, commands. It means that you know injecting, injecting some unusual characters at the time of inputting to the application, that time the injection plans uh, uh, vulnerability occurs. Injection can be done through SQL queries, PHP queries, LDAP queries, OS command and uh, uh, URL that is unified resource locator argument manipulations. And injection class can be again injected wherever a user input is required. It can be a text box through, it can be a through a text box or username or a password field or a feedback field or the common field URL etc. See most of the web application requires some inputs from the users or from the customers or from the end user. Through that, the application will receive and process further and provide the in the name of in form of output. And some of the countermeasures are 
so input sanitization is needed it means that input sanitization means that we have to implement the developer at the time of developing this application in form of so for input validations so data sanitization approach to be followed data sanity input sanitization means that implement whitelisting approach at server end for what all can be accepted and block all other we call it as a blacklisted the whitelisting means that which of the data are the characters to be allowed uh, in form of uh, allowing users uh, to enter as in the name of uh, input and also again uh, the developer should have the blacklisted data or characters also if user trying to enter uh, the sum of the characters listed as a blacklist should not be allowed so that so that the proper uh, the, this injection flaws can be avoided and the use of uh, safe uh, api that application program interfaces and uh, parameterized queries so these are also some of the countermeasures to be taken up to be followed to be implemented to avoid injection flaws see the injection flaws why it is of a topmost security risk means that nowadays if you talk about any web application web application is a front end but back end the web application connected to the database so once it is a connected database, the application will retrieve the data, either pull the data or pushing the data or fetching the data or store the data through the web application is a through web application. It means that web application is a the intermediate layer between between the end user or customers and the database. So it is a very, very sensitive risk uh, the uh, so that uh, the developers or the software developer should take care should keep it in mind while developing while designing the application web application now the second is that the broken uh, authentication it is a uh, the second uh, risk uh, uh, involved in a web application broken authentication occurs when the application mismanages uh, the session related uh, information such that the user's identity gets compromised the information can be in the form of uh, session cookies passwords secret keys etc the aim here the aim of broken authentication uh, is to either get into someone else's session or use a session which has been ended by the user or steal the session related information this is also compulsory okay the developer has to take care the countermeasures are use of again multi-factor authentication keep session isolation and ideal session timeouts and using secured cookies see generally for example, I will tell you that if uh, once we connected uh, or accessing the web application with whatever authentication, whether multi single level or multi level, see generally whenever using a back buttons or something, it should not uh, back buttons uh, compulsory it is to be uh, discouraged. What will happen that whenever we are tra traversing web application in a multi levels so the urls will be captured at the browser window if that url is captured and if we are not making uh, session isolation what will happen that directly if the second level url is captured by entering second level url in next time directly the application will land it to that level so that's why which is again bypassing the authentication so in such case the the for it to avoid this broken authentication the countermeasures are use of multi-factor authentication is compulsory similarly session isolation is also required and uh, ideal session time each session whenever a, a user get connected to any web application compulsory a session id will be there and also the session should be managed even at some timestamps 
and also some timeouts also should be enforced otherwise uh, what will happen so uh, if a session is continuously open always uh, so the hackers or attackers will take uh, an advantage of it and um, and apply this broken kind of authentication technique to get a control of uh, the web application and also use secured cookies so this is the second uh, okay uh, vulnerability risk and third one is that sensitive data exposure see many web applications and uh, apis uh, application program interfaces do not properly protect uh, sensitive data the sensitive, sensitive data is such as finance related to finance or maybe healthcare even uh, the system related like uh, username password and all of this uh, generally we consider it as a sensitive data so the web applications uh, do not properly protect this sensitive data compulsory some measures to be taken to protect all this thing attackers may steal or modify such weakly protected data to conduct credit card fraud identity theft or other crimes so the sensitive data may be uh, compromised without extra protection such as encryption even at rest or in a transit and requires special precautions when exchanged with the browser the goal is to identify sensitive data bits and exploit them so this is also one of the uh, you know critical vulnerable risk the sensitive data exposure so always the developer should have an idea that among the data which is a sensitive data and should pay some more attention to avoid its exposure by hacker or attacker so certain counter measures can be taken up to avoid this or to protect this sensitive data exposure or one is that encrypt all data in transit and at rest see for example if a web application means that so always the users connect remotely to the server and data will be transmitted from user a remote location to servers and vice versa while data traveling compulsory the data should be uh, encrypted that's why the one of the counter measures is encrypt all data in transit means that in travel and also at rest even though the data is resided in a some database or at a server end again that data also that data which is at rest mode should also be encrypted maybe i think i am not talking about the entire data which is rested at uh, uh, a database to be encrypted at least to categorize that which is a sensitive data at least the data should always be in a encrypted mode and use secure protocols and also algorithm and disable caching of responses with sensitive data it means that always have to disable the the caching responses so these are all some of the counter measures to be uh, implemented to avoid the sensitive data exposure uh, uh, security risk and then uh, students the another uh, uh, risk is the broken access control see the broken access control occurs if restrictions are not properly enforced on uh, authenticated users on what they are allowed to do in such case the broken access control uh, so risk will be okay uh, will be encountered and similarly so in such case attackers can exploit these flaws the broken access control flaws to access unauthorized functionality and or the data such as access other users accounts view sensitive files modify other users data change access rights etc so some of the counter measures to avoid to protect from broken access control is one is invalidate invalidate tokens and cookies after logout see what i am saying that once okay uh, some cookies are there we have to make tokens and session tokens or cookies are there those to be automatically win, invalidated whenever soon after the logout 
but to see that this is a one of the countermeasures where the developer should keep it in mind and forced login logout after a password change so another is that whenever there is a need of a password change compulsory compulsory the application has to force the user to login or a logout and similarly enforce server side resource restriction these are all some of the counter measures to be taken up to protect the broken access control risk the next one is that security misconfiguration see the security misconfiguration is a result of insecure default configurations incomplete or ad hoc configurations open cloud storage misconfigured http headers and web uh, verbose uh, error messages containing sensitive information so compulsory so while configuring the system all these things to be properly taken care and examples of the security misconfigurations are see again so weak passwords default password default scripts stored on servers default directories default error messages etc see whenever for example see that when you uh, install and configure and commission a an operating system or even a, some application tool by default some default uh, accounts will be created along with some password so once it is properly configured and before deploying the application for a in a real time all such things to be identified and then detected and remove all such thing otherwise everybody knows or most of the most of the hackers or most of the people knows that what would be the some default usernames and passwords so through that again again there is a uh, scope uh, that the hackers or attackers will uh, access the application uh, through this uh, the default accounts so some of the countermeasures to protect the security misconfigurations is having hardening process in place for both hardware and applications do ensure that defaults are changed that's why i'm telling that compulsory hardening the os is essentially needed to avoid so this security misconfiguration it means that having a hardening process in place for both even one is hardware as well as the applications and again one has to ensure that defaults are changed install only required features from the framework see another is that generally generally if you install any software it will come with more features which are even not required when talking about a, a particular uh, application or a particular um, domain but uh, take everything which is not necessary but if it is becoming a the part of all features are becoming unnecessarily again opening the scope for hackers or attackers so, so to okay uh, make use of such that's why always uh, we have to see that the administrator should always see that install only the required features of whether it is related to an application or an operating system compulsory only install the required uh, okay features from the whatever the development framework software and review the security of the configuration at a fixed intervals compulsory it is to be reviewed uh, so these are all so some of the counter measures to protect from security misconfigurations well students the another security flaw is a cross site uh, scripting so generally it is noted as uh, xss see the cross site scripting occurs when an attacker is uh, able to insert untrusted data or untrusted scripts into a web page the data or scripts inserted by the attacker get executed in the browser can steal users data hijack user sessions deface website or even redirect the user to the malicious sites etc we have been seeing also see for example suddenly some institutional some organization uh, no website will be hacked shows that uh, some different uh, irrelevant information so there are so thousands of uh, such cases near where websites are defaced 
So these are all happening so due to this cross site uh, scripting. That's why I'm telling that. See the data or scripts is inserted by the attacker get executed in the browser. It means the through browser generally the cross site scripting so happens through the browser. So the browser what will the browser can steal the user data and also hijack user sessions and also deface website or otherwise also the redirect to the redirecting the user whoever entered that uh, a particular url to a malicious site which is a very very dangerous so vulnerability or risk involved in a web application due to through due to this uh, cross site uh, scripting flaw so the some of the countermeasures are output uh, encoding and escaping untrusted characters, enabling content security policy. These are all some of the countermeasures to be implemented by the developers at the time of developing web application. So to avoid or to protect from the cross-site scripting. The another risk involved in web application is insecure deserialization is also another the security flaw or a security risk. Insecure decentralization often leads to remote remote code execution. The main thing is that to execute the code remotely. Even if deserialization flaw do not result in remote code execution they can be used to perform attacks including replay attacks, injection attack and privilege escalation attack. These are all some of the so damage is going to happen if this insecure decentralization risk. So compulsory the developers should encounter uh, uh, this insecure decentralization with a countermeasure as encrypt of the serialized data. Data most of the serialized data should be encrypted. The another one is using components with known vulnerability. So unacceptable way of doing the thing means that using component with known vulnerability. Once we know that certain component tools have some vulnerabilities, one should not use them in development. But uh, the statistic says that the developers use for various reasons uh, uh, for uh, the certain components with uh, known vulnerabilities. See the components such as see, for example some libraries, framework and other software modules run with the same privileges as the application. If the vulnerable component is exploited such uh, an attack can uh, facilitate the serious data loss or uh, the server will be taken over. So one has to be very very careful and applications and API that application program interfaces using components with known vulnerabilities may undermine application defenses and enable various attacks and impacts. So this see the vulnerability like this using the components with unknown vulnerabilities using them as part of developing application which leads to so many consequences. So, so the developers has to keep it in mind and have a the proper defensive code to write for a countermeasuring of this known the components with known vulnerabilities. One is that frequent patching process. See that generally you know that see development is a, a continuous process even though some software tool development software development tool say version X is some good for some features but again it has some limitations for some other. In such case if the company the develop would the, the company or the agency which releases uh, some patches compulsory the developer has to okay patching that uh, patching process to be initiated so to update that patches that's why one of the countermeasures uh, is frequent patching process to be implemented so that uh, so that uh, any vulnerabilities are there through these patches uh, the vulnerabilities will be will be uh, encountered or maybe minimized or maybe can be stopped and subscribe to various forums which share the least vulnerabilities and mitigation techniques 
or the fixes various forums are there where to educate ourselves and also to get a, a required knowledge when we are uh, at a uh, at a, a particular situation what to be done how to find a solutions for that subscribe to always various forums are there we share the the latest vulnerabilities and also the mitigation techniques correct so maybe uh, one it is difficult to one person to know everything that's why there are so many forums are there through that so one can know what is going on in a particular version is there any uh vulnerabilities are there and how to mitigate uh, and know also certain mitigation uh, technique so this is uh, some of the counter measures as far as uh, uh, the uh, using component with known vulnerabilities uh, concerned and another is student uh, so the anaral another vulnerability or security risk in a web application is insufficient logging and monitoring see students uh insufficient uh, uh, logging and monitoring coupled with uh, missing uh, or ineffective integration with incident response and uh, allows attackers to further attack systems and maintain uh, systems maintain persistence pivot to more systems and uh, even tamper or extract or destroy the data so some of the uh, counter measures uh, to protect from insufficient logging and monitoring is 24 by 7 monitoring of application traffic and log analysis is needed and effective security incident and response procedures to be in place and practice so these are all some of the counter measures to be used to protect from insufficient logging and monitoring and the last one the another security risk are in the top 10 is xml external entities they represented as you know xxc it means that many older or poorly configured xml processors evaluate external entity references within xml document external entities can be used to disclose internal files using the file url and handler uh, even the internal file shares internal port scanning remote code execution and denial of service attack so uh, users are see the developers uh, compulsory keep uh, okay uh, this in mind to protect uh, the xml external entities so some of the counter measures to protect from xml uh, external entities is avoid serialization of uh, sensitive data and uh, implement white listing approach at server side to prevent malicious xml uh, upload and also code review these are all uh, some of the counter measures uh, to be taken up uh, to protect from xml external entities this uh, risk these are all students so what uh, i talked about so far are the top 10 uh, vulnerabilities or security risks uh, involved in uh, uh, web application as part of web application of course there could be many more but by keeping its sensitivity or its frequency in mind this top 10 uh, vulnerabilities are listed by the owasp that is a web application security project uh, site and uh, it was uh, taken up of course there would be many and uh, then to proceed further let us know something about again the top 10 proactive controls also the first top 10 what i told that those are all certain risk involved in web application uh, as part of web application security so further the developer has to take uh, knowledge to protect uh, uh all these uh, vulnerabilities at the time of developing web application now the next i would like to talk about uh, on top 10 proactive control the top 10 proactive control is a list of uh, security techniques uh, that should be considered for every software development project this is a document is written for developers to assist uh, those new to secure development and this top 10 proactive controls uh, is one of the main goals of this document is provide concrete practical guidance that helps developers to
to build secure software and these techniques should be applied proactively at the early stages of software development to ensure maximum effectiveness. So let's see that students what are the top 10 proactive controls apart from the top 10 vulnerabilities or the security risks. The top 10 proactive controls are one is define security requirements, leverage security frameworks and libraries, secure database access, encode and escape data, validate all inputs, implement digital identity, enforce access controls, protect data everywhere, implement security logging and monitoring, handle all errors and exceptions. These are all the top 10 proactive controls. Let me so give a, a brief insight on each proactive control. The first one is define security requirements. See, a security requirement is a statement of uh, needed security functionality that ensures one of many different security properties of software is being satisfied. Security requirements are derived from industry standards, applicable laws and a history of past vulnerabilities. And security requirements define new features or additions to existing features to solve a specific security problem or eliminate a potential vulnerability. So that's why defined security requirement is one of the proactive controls to be taken up to protect from the web application security risk. See, the security requirement provide a foundation of vetted security functionality for an application. Instead of creating a custom approach to security for every application, standard security requirements allow developers to reuse the definition of security control and best practices instead of to begin again. See, the define security requirement, it involves four processes. The first one is discovery and selection investigation and documentation, implementation and test and vulnerabilities prevented. These are all in four phases the security requirements can be defined. The next uh, student, the next uh, uh, proactive control is uh, the leverage security frameworks and uh, libraries. It is also essentially needed. Source coding libraries and software frameworks with uh, embedded security help software developers guard against security related design and uh, implementation flaws. A developer writing an application from scratch might not have sufficient knowledge, uh, time or a budget to properly implement and maintain security features. Leveraging security frameworks helps accomplish uh, security goals more efficiently and, uh, and accurately. Secure frameworks and libraries can help to prevent a wide range of web application vulnerabilities. So uh, the student, the leverage uh, security frameworks and libraries is also one of the proactive controls to be taken up. And the third one is that secure database access, which is also very, very essential needed, which is one of the proactive controls. The secure access to all data stores, including both relational databases and no SQL databases. It includes secure queries, secure configuration, secure authentication, and secure communication. So uh, this is also one of the proactive controls one has to take an up. And uh, the another proactive control is encode and escape data. Uh, encoding and uh, escaping are defensive techniques meant to stop injection attack, especially the encoding and escaping the data definitely support and prevents or protects to stop, protects from injection attacks. That's why encoding and escaping are defensive techniques meant to stop injection attacks. 
So student, the another uh, product control is validate all inputs. Input validation is a programming technique uh, that ensures only properly formatted data may enter a software system component. Check that data is both syntactically and semantically valid before using it. There are two general approaches to performing uh, input syntax validation. The two general approaches are blacklisting or blacklist validation. It attempts to check that given data does not contain known bad content. And similarly, whitelisting or whitelist validation attempts to check that a given data matches a set of unknown good rule. Students, so this is a, one of the okay where one of the proactive controls compulsory the all input should be validated uh, before using it in the application that's why all inputs then uh, generally uh, no uh, with the help of uh, this blacklisting validation or whitelisting validation techniques compulsory one can one can take care about uh, validation of uh, the uh, all input which is uh, essentially needed there, otherwise if you allow uh, such a bad uh, bad input that is a known bad content if you allow definitely it leads to infection flaws that's why uh, it should be taken up the another is that implementation of uh, digital identity which is also one of the uh, proactive controls See, digital identity is the unique representation of a user as they engage in an online transaction. Authentication is the process of verifying that an individual or entity is who they claim to be. It means that for to implement digital identity, authentication is to be implemented preferably multi-level authentication or multiple level authentication at level 1, level 2, level 3. Say for example at level 1 authentication, so generally we all know that the password with password authentication, username and password, generally it is to be at level 1. Suppose nowadays because of the sensitivity of application, so uh, level 1 authentication is not sufficient. That's why the level 2 is also essentially needed. I think nowadays so slowly all web applications uh, uh, supports multi-level authentication or multi-factor authentication. In a multi-factor authentication, one is username and password. After that, the second level is uh, see the OTP right, right now. For all most of the financial applications and other applications, multi as a factor of multi-factor authentication, OTP is being used as a second level. So that it means that multi-level multi-factor means that so another secure code apart from password will be sent to the registered mobile or the email ID which was given to the this application. So, so that uh, the secure code will in uh, in form of uh, OTP will be sent to the user mobile or a email so that that uh, secure code to be re-entered then only so once it is uh, complied then only authentication will be okay or the application will be accessed and even still cryptographic based authentication also will be implemented even if seen for a uh, still more sensitive application so compulsory the implementation of uh, digital identity is one of the one of the proactive controls to be considered to be looked into or to be implemented to avoid the security risks involved in uh, web applications and another proactive control is enforce access control which is also essential needed access control are also called authorization is the process of granting or denying specific request from a user or a program or a process and access control also involves the act of granting and revoking those privileges and there are different types of uh, access control designs are there. One is uh, discretionary access control, mandatory access control, role-based access control, 
attribute based access control. These are different designs to be implemented for uh, enforcing access control mechanism, which is also uh, this enforcement of uh, access control is also one of the proactive controls. And another is that protect data everywhere, which is also essentially needed. Sensitive data such as the passwords, credit card numbers, health record, personal information and business secrets requires extra protection, particularly the data falls under privacy laws, financial data protection rules and other such regulations. So some of the methods to protect the data or one is encrypt the data in a transit when it is in transit, encrypt the data even it is at rest and also at secure local storage. Of course, generally encrypting the entire data may, be, may not be feasible, but uh, uh, the, we have to, we have to uh, no, identify that which is a sensitive data, but I am sure that such sensitive data should always be always be protected whether by using some of the techniques as I told whether the such data to be encrypted even though it is in transit it means that when data is traveling also it should be encrypted it should not be traveled in a plain mode or plain text mode and even such data is in at rest mode or at, uh, at server level or storage level such data also should be encrypted so that uh, it can be protected from hackers or uh, attackers even though it is get hacked it will not be seen okay and uh, another proactive control is implement security logging and uh, monitoring security logging is uh, uh, to log security information during the runtime operation of an application and similarly monitoring is uh, the live review of application and security logs using various uh, forms of uh, automation compulsory the security logging and monitoring is essentially needed so that uh, it helps it helps even though something goes wrong uh, the logs will help uh, uh, for post-mortem and to avoid uh, to protect uh, such uh, unforeseen things again uh, will not happen in future so proper measures to be taken up and uh, another is that uh, handle all errors and exceptions this exception handling programming concept that allows an application to respond to different error states even though like you know different error states are maybe network down or maybe database connection lost or failed uh, these are different ways but even though in such situation uh, the exception handling once we implemented then the application will respond instead of uh, abruptly stopping or uh, hanging so handling exceptions and error correctly is uh, critical to making uh, the your code reliable and secure so always the handling all errors and exceptions this is also one of the proactive controls to be taken up or to be considered to protect the web application from from security risk so the developers or the web developer should have uh, uh, have a sufficient or adequate knowledge to implement uh, this uh, access of the proactive control. Uh, as students, you know, now just see that I talked about the top 10 vulnerabilities in a security, uh, in a security aspect and again uh, another top 10 uh, proactive controls. Now when by keeping all these things, now I would like to say something about the best practices to be followed to secure a web application. See, one is that, you know, the embedded uh, defensive programming or a secure coding uh, in uh, sensitive application is essentially needed. Let's practice uh, defensive programming as a mandatory programming inbuilt with or embedded with uh, the business uh, logic. And uh, maybe, maybe now, uh, even at a school level or college level or a, a university level, the faculty while teaching uh, uh, any programming language compulsory the secure programming concept also to be taken up so that students from the beginning from the scratch this uh, culture also to be adopted so that application will be always secure so compliance with uh, the OWASP 
security guidelines. Students, as I told you that the OWASP, which is a the Open Web Application Security Project, which is a very rich website, uh, through that one can learn or acquire adequate knowledge, especially for developing a web application in a security aspect. Even though you are developing web application in various platforms, that uh, site gives you that uh, the security risks at uh, each platform, whether it is a Windows based or open source or whichever uh, you are taking. Suppose if it is a Windows based, even you are using AW, uh, the uh, ASP.NET. Uh, uh, so, it gives you that what are uh, certain vulnerabilities, how to be uh, taken care. Even though you are using say some open source like a PHP or a, even a Java or something that also it will support, it will uh, give uh, insight how to protect uh, the securities even if you are developing, if you are choosing these platforms are uh, the application development tools. And another is that a strong uh, uh, digital infrastructure security policy is essentially needed, which is a lagging, to be frank, uh, the security policy is uh, essentially needed. That security policy talks about uh, the strong digital uh, infrastructure. Otherwise, the absence of that also leads so many, so many adverse uh, consequences and systems and services should always pass through security audit before deployment in real time. Student, this is one of the best practices even though one we have developed a web application and also hosted on some server, then always the server and as well as the application should be secured audit it should be audited securely so that identify that whether it is properly configured or not and all the security risks can be uh, taken up or not so that so the security audit always helps the another is that system should capture all events happen and store in form of a log file for monitoring and uh, to do post-mortem in case of uh, damage happened. Always uh, maintaining uh, the logs are so essentially needed and also for a, it helps for regular monitoring and also some to do some kind of post-mortem in case of uh, something happened to the application. And another is that uh, the regular system and data backups uh, to restore system run services in case of damage happened. What is ultimate? Even though if we are considering so many taken up so many security controls, proactive measures, even though because uh, always there is there will be some risk involved despite uh, several precautions uh, taken up. In such case, uh, if we have a the regular backup of systems and applications so that uh, so that systems can be restored again in case of even a major damage. And finally, redundancy to be maintained or to be ensured in form of internet connectivity, systems and servers, applications and services, database and storage. So, redundancy is essential needed. Even 100% redundancy should be ensured so, so, that, so that the business consistency and continuity can be ensured. Of course, uh, definitely is a, some kind of a costly affair, but uh, by keeping the sensitivity or importance of uh, the applications, no other way that uh, to implement uh, or to, en uh, to ensure uh, redundancy. So that uh, once we have uh, multiple ISPs, internet service providers, so that even uh, one ISP gone down, the, the application services will be uh, no, ensured through other ISP. If both are working on load sharing uh, or load balancing mode, so both can be worked. So that can be implemented okay, at uh, network level, that is internet connectivity level, systems and servers level, applications and uh, services level and database storage level. Always web application by keeping its sensitive business application in mind, redundancy should be should be ensured. And students, I hope, I hope uh, this lecture uh, might be enlighten you uh, to know something about web application and 
it's why what is a web application and why web application is prone to hack or attack by the hackers and uh, what are uh, uh, the top 10 vulnerabilities generally uh, involved uh, in a web application also we call it as a security risk and also I talked about uh, the top 10 uh, uh, proactive controls also to be implemented to protect uh, to protect the web applications from security risk and uh, I think I told even the best practices also to be followed to have a business consistency and continuity through web applications. With this uh, students I will conclude. So the, my concluding remarks are web application security is essentially needed to secure web applications and can be implemented by compliance with the OWASP guidelines. Once again, uh, I am again uh, uh, requesting all the students or all the uh, web application developers better see that the OWASP guidelines which will be available at the website www.awasp.org where uh, it uh, enlightens uh, all uh, enlightens uh, enlighten all the developers uh, to know about uh, various uh, okay vulnerabilities or risks involved and also various uh, how to mitigate them i hope uh, students uh, you all uh, enjoyed this talk uh, with this I will conclude and uh, thank you, thanks for listening.